Now? The blue pencil? All right, all right. Is this what you're after? No, not the computer. Tell them why animators always use a blue pencil. Well, that goes back a long way. It possibly predates animation. Some of the very first commercial animators, especially in the States, were from a newspaper cartoonist's background. And so for that, blue pencil was the non-copy colour that you could rough out stuff and mark up stuff. And after you had inked up your artwork, the blue would turn out as basically white when the uh, plates were made for printing. There's something kind of cool and relaxed about blue as well. The other thing is you can draw fairly lightly with it and it comes up very soft and light so you haven't committed yourself to your drawing at that stage. You're still kind of working it out. Cool. Relaxed. Excellent. Okay, now, computers. How do they help traditional animators? What the computer does is, for one, it hugely speeds up the paint process here. Uh, and when I have a scene in here, as soon as I've finished painting it, I can hit play and it plays it for me. When people think about computer animation, it's the three-dimensional effects that spring to mind. But the first computers in New Zealand animation in the mid-1980s were used by traditional animators to extend the depth of effects they could use in 2D films. One of the most accomplished and innovative films to come out of this country was made by Bob Stenhouse in Wellington in 1986 using the new technology. The Frog, the Dog and the Devil was the first New Zealand animation to be nominated for an Academy Award. But in the same year, another dog was heading for the animation screen, this time on traditional painted cells, to become our first, and so far only, full-length animated feature. We set up this massive kind of studio with hundreds of animators working away at pencil drawing and doing their thing. And it went on for about three years, literally, off and on. And uh, it, uh, it was a very long, laborious process. Yeah. Pat Cox was the producer of Foot Rock Flats, The Dog's Tale, a project that ate up years of his life from the time he first noticed Murray Ball's cartoon strip in the newspaper. I got Murray's number in Gisborne, and I rang him, and I said, Murray, what do you think about the idea of doing a feature film based on Foot Rock Flats? And he said, no, 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 I wouldn't really be interested in that. I, I, I don't think that's a good idea. And so I dropped it. And then about six or eight months later, I rang Murray again, and he remembered me from the first time, and he said, uh, uh, you're a bugger coming back asking me again. I've already said no. And I said, well, look, really consider this because I think it would make a great animation film. Which it eventually did. And even though the actual animation was done in Sydney, the film remains a New Zealand landmark, even mostly satisfying the dog's original creator, Murray Ball. It didn't really strike me. The, the impact of movement didn't strike me until I saw the first sort of rushes of the thing and uh, all of a sudden they, they just sprang into life and uh, it hooked me, really. I thought, well, you know, that's, that's wonderful. It's almost like being God. If there's a bird behind me, Murphy, it'll probably bite me on the prickle. The main reason the movie was made in Sydney was we simply didn't have the sheer number of animators to paint up the traditional acetate cells. But growing computer power meant that numbers were becoming less important in the animation game. And one of the first to recognize the potential of the computer for three-dimensional animation was John Shields. The breakthrough for us came with an opening title sequence for the program Ready to Roll, where we did a, a dancing figure for that. Uh, that got a round of applause from our user group in the States, which was quite amazing, um, because the software technically couldn't do any of that. And that was, that was sort of, um, that's the thing that, that's been the biggest inspiration to me working in this industry so far is trying to do things that the software isn't capable of especially these days when the software is capable of everything and part of pushing those boundaries for john and his brother michael was the creation of our first 3d computer generated film red screen the big thing that we wanted to do was just try and use the computer as a tool for making the, the animated cartoon to actually help us this is on the computer that um, you wouldn't even 
buy it for word processing these days. I, don't, I th honestly think the processor in my phone is more powerful than that computer. Well, it was paranoid for a while. But despite the experimental enthusiasm, it was still advertising that was both the sketchpad and financial bedrock for the new generation of 3D animators. A developing television industry helped as well, of course. Another TVNZ music program, Radio with Pictures, gave Fane Flaws his first taste of 2D animation. I designed a little cartoon strip and thought, well, I'll do an animation, you know, first have a crack at animation, see what happens. Can't be that hard. So I went to Gnome Productions and asked you and Frizzell, I, I want to animate this, how do I do it? And he gave me a pegboard and, and some animation paper and said, draw on that. And we sort of, that's where it went from there. Fane went on to animate commercials and finally to a labor of love, the Underwater Melon Man series of poems. The Hyde and Ziggy Bird, ladies and gentlemen. The strangest thing I personally have ever heard concerns the aforementioned Hyde and Ziggy Bird. It's actually said to hide and count to ten and then locate itself and hide again. Oh, <coughs> probably cost me a house and, and a um, bit, of, bit of health. But, I mean, it's a crazy idea. Uh, making a film frame by frame is just an insane idea. I have no idea how I ever agreed to get involved in it, but I'll probably do it again. It was Ewan Frizzell at Gnome Productions who got Fane started on the path to losing his house. And it was Ewan who was to help start a young computer animator on the way to 3D stardom. Perth, do you have work to do? Yes. Can you go and do it? Thank you. Um, push the door.